I'm going to kick us all off by asking a couple of questions. How often is it that you're in face-to-face, in-person communication with one another in comparison to how often you're communicating through some type of digital means? Now, I want you to think about that number. Think about it like a percentage. How has that percentage grown or shaped up over time? Now, what about the last date or job interview that you went to? Did you not feel as though you knew the person sitting there because you might have done some research on them before? Welcome to the new world, where technology not only plays a part in our relationships, but it actually is what grows, shapes, and forms them. This leads a lot of people to think that technology is a bad thing, and it's the enemy of human connection. I am here today to tell you that it is, in fact, not the enemy, and that it is our ally. I can tell you this because over the course of my career, I have built technology platforms that have connected hundreds of thousands of individuals, whether they're pre- and post-op patients helping each other through their healthcare journeys, or two romantic lovers helping them guide them through the most difficult discussions in their relationships, or connecting home buyers and sellers to the most predominant real estate producers across the nation. There's one constant. I've done it with technology every single time. So we have to think about where we are today, how we got here, and the role that technology has played and how big of a role it's playing. So we look to the numbers. Today, there are over 212 major social media platforms. That is not inclusive of the 1,500 dating apps, and of course not inclusive of the tens of thousands of forums and blogs that exist. And across all of these platforms, there are over 2 billion daily active users and 20 billion engagements happening every day. I mean, those numbers are crazy, right? Like, I could not even tell you how many zeros are in 20 billion. But what I can tell you is that us, as users of these platforms, on average, are spending two and a half hours a day on them. And that's where this all starts to make a lot of sense. Now, if I were to rewind the clock 30, 40 years ago, there would only be one number up on this screen. And that number is simply zero. Now, what this tells us is, is how quickly that technology is scaling into our lives. And again, is that a bad thing? No. So I'm going to share with you a little personal story as to why that is. I was at the mall with my friends. I had just met the girl of my dreams. I was standing there with a little piece of paper that she had given me with her name and number on it. I was 14 at the time and 15 minutes in love. I was on top of the world, people. Now, we were supposed to go see a movie that day. I couldn't tell you what the movie was. Why? Because I was there thinking about, what am I going to say to this girl to get her to go on a date with me you know, the next day when I call her from my parents' landline? Now, so as soon as the movie was over, I race back home, digs inside my pocket, and what did I find? Nothing. Number was gone. And so, what did I do? I started <laughs> digging through everything, retracing my stacks, calling the movie theater, and arguing with my parents. I was a mess. And every single time that I couldn't find it, my heart sank further and further and further. That, wasn't t- that was <laughs> before I fell in love again the next week, but that's a story for another time. Now, Would this happen today? No. Why? Because we have technology. Technology that when we have one piece of anecdotal information about someone, all of a sudden we're privy to everything, right? Maybe it's contact information. Maybe it's shared connections. Maybe she likes pizza just like me. Maybe they have dogs, cats. Maybe they have both. What was the last vacation they went on? All of it. And instead of then having and then losing this little crumpled up piece of paper, I'm now walking around with a digital encyclopedia about my mystery mall girl. So, how is this applicable in your life? What about all the misconnections that you guys have had? Whether it be a passerby, maybe it's a lost number, maybe it's a lost business card that could have set your career on a different trajectory. All of these connections are now a web of connections that are shaping our new world. And this new world is what I am calling the digital village, where every single person is your neighbor and nobody is out of reach. So when you think about a village, What does that typically look like? A small, quaint, tiny little place where everyone seems to know each other, you know what's going on in each other's lives, who's dating who, who's doing what. 
But in our village today, there are over six billion people. Yet, we are still functioning in the same way. How? Well, it's because technology allows us to know a lot about a lot of people and then learn a lot very, very quickly. And it is in that sense that we are forming relationships with people and they with us, even though we may not know each other. This is very similar as to how historically we have formed relationships with celebrities through big screens and magazines. I got news for everybody here. It's going to be big. So I need you all to bear with me. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot to handle. But as of right now, in this very moment, each and every single one of you are, in fact, celebrities. You guys are digital celebrities on the big screen of tech. And everybody has access to you through their screens, even though we don't even know each other. So <clears throat> that date, I bet you knew more than just their name. What about that job interview? Did you just walk into the company and say, hi, hey, hello, hire me, tell me about your company? What about a big sales meeting? Did you not know who your customer was before you started selling to them? Or maybe you're a student who researched all their professors before deciding which one's class to take. So I got more big news for you. I know you guys are still overwhelmed with the fact that you all are now celebrities, but this is bigger. You are not just celebrities. You are superheroes. You are celebrity superheroes, people. You're kind of like Iron Man, right? And now you're thinking, like, Patrick, like, what, what, what is my superpower? Your superpower is that you have the ability to know people before you meet them. You have the ability to prepare in a way to help guide your relationships to a completely new level. It was Ben Franklin who told us, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And you combine that with your superpower, you now have the ability to have a great number of great relationships. And it actually all boils down to a very simple equation. Because if you can find those commonalities, all of a sudden you start to have similar interests. And if you have commonalities and interests, you start to share values. And if you share commonalities, interests, and values, you start to spend time together. And if you have commonalities, interests, values, and you're spending time together, well, that kind of sounds an awful lot like a relationship. And whether it's personal or professional, the equation stays the same. Your village just added brand new neighbors. Okay, there's a lot to handle here, right? You just found out you're living in a village, there's six billion people in it, you're a celebrity, you're a superhero, there's a lot going on. Now you gotta manage it. Because if you put six billion people in a single place at one time, it's gonna be hectic, it's gonna be crazy. But you as leaders of your village have to understand how to make clarity amongst the chaos. It was Sarah Kay who told us to never let someone take up emotional real estate inside of our minds unless they're paying rent. And I think this is something that we can all associate with in some kind of way. I know I'm guilty of it. I've made this mistake many times where I've had a friend, a loved one, a significant other, that I thought I could trust, that I thought would be there for me through thick and thin, that see it all the way through. And I was let down. I was hurt. I felt alone. What we have to focus on now is how do we improve this? Right? And the only way to improve something is to be able to understand it. And to understand it, you have to learn how to measure it. And we can now measure our relationships in a completely new way than ever before is that we are privy not only to the information that is directly in front of our face, we are privy to the information all around us. Because technology gives us this new lens, right? And, it's, and what's so interesting about this is that it's not just giving us the ability to form deeper relationships with others, it's challenging ourselves to form a deeper relationship with ourselves. And is that being the same person in the moments we share with one another, as to who we are and how we represent ourselves out to the rest of the world. And this is what allows us to be able to decide who are the people that we want to bring in and help manage and build our village? Who are the people that I want to surround myself with the most? That's the decision we can make now. And so with all these decisions, all these overwhelming things that I'm telling you, I mean, you're managing a village with six billion people as a superhero celebrity. And here's the thing, right? Now it's time in true superhero fashion to learn how to protect it. 
because it's not all sunshine and rainbow, folks. It's not. Technology has a very large dark side to it. And that is where it starts to take away from our human connection. Have you ever been at the dinner table and somebody takes out their phone to start taking photos of their food? Phone eats first. What about you're at a critically important meeting at your company and you're sending emails out? Or perhaps worst of all, that you take your phone out and you're taking pictures to just to post or to send to other people instead of just taking a step back and enjoying the view. Pay attention. I don't have a phone anymore. Get off the phones. Focus in. We need to understand how to leverage technology to allow us to arrive in the present moment instead of it providing us a way to leave through digital distraction. This is the paradox, is that this accessibility, yes, it creates accessibility to all of us together, but it also creates the accessibility to leave. Our outcomes are ours to own, and technology is nothing more than a tool. How we use that tool can lead to good or bad outcomes. And we need to stop pointing the finger at technology and blaming it for when our relationships with others don't go the way that we want them to go. Our outcomes are ours to own. It's a tool. So, we as society, we are developing faster than ever, but technology is faster than us. It's innovating faster than we can. And it's not our job to ignore this. It's not our job to try and rewind the clocks. It is our job to learn to leverage it, to lean into it, to learn ways to develop new, more connected relationships with one another. It is up to each and every single one of you, now as masters of your digital villages, to decide whether or not you are going to use technology as your enemy or as your ally. But only together, through all of our villages, can we create a better, more connected world for tomorrow. Thank you.